how temperature and relative humidity affect collection items. Let's go over the basics. Temperature, as you know, is the measure of heat expressed in Celsius or Fahrenheit and is used when we discuss how warm or cool a space is. Temperature affects objects chemically and that the greater the temperature is, the faster the rate of natural decay accelerates. Relative humidity is the amount of moisture present in the air and it is expressed as a percentage. Relative humidity affects objects mechanically since it can prompt them to gain or lose moisture which causes swelling or shrinking of the materials. This process of swelling and shrinking is damaging to the structure of the object, hence mechanical damage. Let's explore temperature some more. Here we have various object types with their very general preferences. It is important to know these to ensure that whatever object types are in the collection are in the best possible environment. These are considered safe temperature ranges. Once the temperature exceeds 75 degrees, chemical decay accelerates, and below 54 degrees, chemical decay slows. The rate of reaction for this decay or deterioration doubles with each temperature increase of 18 degrees. Even though decay slows at 54 degrees, there is a reason why these safe temperature ranges have lower limits. Not everything can stand being that cold. Modern paints and some rubbers and plastics can become brittle and crack. We know that high temperatures means accelerated decay but high has a different meaning depending on the object type. 68 degrees is high for paper, leather, and rubber, while 54 degrees is high for dyes, acetate, nitrate, some film types, and other plastics. When it comes to conditioning a space, temperature can be sustained, like keeping it at 72 year round, or it can fluctuate where it might be higher in the summer and lower in the winter. Maintaining a steady temperature is less important than avoiding sustained extremes, whether those are high or low. Trying to be within or near the safe temperature range for as long as possible is preferable. Fluctuations are okay, but large swings in temperature, especially if they occur quickly, can cause cracking or delamination in composite objects, which are items that have different components that react to heat gain or loss differently. When it comes to changes in temperature, objects react fairly quickly and can acclimate in a matter of hours. The adjustment period is determined by the amount of exposed surface area and the object's ability to store heat. More exposed surface area means less time to adjust, and a greater ability to hold heat means more time to adjust. If there is a planned venue or environment change, it helps to give the item a buffer to let it adjust more slowly. This could be when bringing something out of cold storage or when putting it back in. Having a space that is between the two environments to allow the object to acclimate to the intermediate environment before it gets moved to its final destination, it can acclimate to that then. Housing is another good buffer since it provides a layer around the item and reduces the amount of exposed surface area. Let's switch over to relative humidity. Just like with temperature, each object type has its preferred relative humidity range. Safe relative humidity is generally between 30 to 50 percent, but it does depend on the object type. Time below 25 and above 65 should be brief if it does happen, since they are fairly low and high values. Low relative humidity causes shrinking in hygroscopic materials like wood and paper and can cause these items to become brittle and crack. High relative humidity, on the other hand, 
causes hygroscopic materials to swell, in addition to causing dyes to bleed, metals to corrode, and adhesives to soften. And just like with temperature, again, relative humidity levels can be sustained or fluctuate. And fluctuations are okay as long as they occur slowly and don't go too high or too low. Prolonged exposure to high or low relative humidity can cause objects to warp, and this distortion can occur from a single prolonged exposure or from repeated exposures. With changes in relative humidity, items react fairly slowly. It takes longer for the object to equilibrate or match the moisture content of the air. Depending on the environment, the object will gain or lose moisture, and this process can take days or weeks, depending on its size, exposed surface area, and temperature. In this case, hygroscopic materials which are materials that attract and absorb moisture from the air, are most susceptible to mechanical damage. Paper, parchment, textiles, leathers, and wood are some examples of hygroscopic materials. Hygroscopic materials readily absorb and release moisture to match their environment, which makes them more likely to crack or warp. If there is a planned change in environment, like bringing the object out of or into storage, give it a buffer. Allow the item to acclimate between the extremes in a space that splits the difference. Now that you know how temperature and relative humidity can affect objects on their own, let's look at them together. Appropriate temperature and relative humidity would be as cool within the safe temperature ranges for the object type as possible, while still maintaining a relative humidity between 30 to 50%. This will lessen the amount of chemical and mechanical damage caused by the environment. Inappropriate temperature and relative humidity could be if there is both sustained high temperatures and high relative humidity levels, since this increases the likelihood of insect damage and mold growth. Another case could be cooling the temperature to 65 in summer without removing any moisture from the air. This will produce a very high relative humidity. And just the same, heating to 75 in winter without adding moisture to the air will produce a low relative humidity. All this is to say that limiting periods of less optimal environmental conditions will help keep collection items safer and around longer. In order to manage environmental conditions, monitoring them is the best way. There are a number of tools that can be used, and here are just a few of them. Hygrothermographs are quite accurate and use a bimetal strip to gauge temperature changes and hygroscopic material like a bundle of hair to gauge relative humidity changes. They record with a pen directly onto a cylinder or disc and can be set to record conditions for a day, a week, or a month. They do need to be calibrated regularly. Thermohygrometers are more compact and can have a digital display but they will not provide an immediate visual report like the charts on the hygrothermograph. There are some inexpensive options, but the relative humidity ranges might not meet the environmental needs, and the accuracy and precision is not as guaranteed. They are still a very good option for monitoring a collection environment on a budget, however. Data loggers are very compact and have digital displays like these. Data loggers take data in short, regular intervals and store the data, which can be collected and put into graphs on a phone or computer. Data loggers also need calibration, but much less regularly than the hygrothermographs. A little bit of homework is to check how your environments look. What object types are in your collections? 
What are their temperature and relative humidity preferences? And do they overlap? Are you using any tools to monitor the environment? If you're curious about how temperature can affect relative humidity, please watch how temperature affects relative humidity. Thank you for watching and feel free to contact us with any questions.